Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. This is part two in my first look at the new campaign, uh, which just came out uh, in the game. Uh, this is a game that's about building your own ships and then testing them out in combat, uh, but the campaign adds a little bit of a sort of real, well, I guess the real politic element isn't in the game yet, but basically it allows you to fight through kind of a proxy World War I naval war between the British and the German empires starting in 1890 and allows you to focus on things like building ships, uh, managing your budget, uh, managing your research budget, and then also kind of, you know, upgrading your technologies and moving through history uh, or at least alternate history. Now, in our last video, we did start the campaign as Germany and we fought our first battle against some torpedo boats and uh, merchant ships and the battle didn't go very well. And so I have come to the decision that I need a new class of light cruisers. And that's what you see in front of you here. The class is going to be called the Butcher class. It is going to be a little bit different. There are going to be no torpedoes on this ship because I feel like torpedoes, despite my own lessons uh, at their at their hands um, in the last battle, it feels to me like torpedoes are really not technologically there yet. And so I'm going to go for a light cruiser uh, that is going to have a reasonable amount of armor for a light cruiser, just shy of a one inch main belt. Uh, and about two and a half inches on the conning tower. And it's going to be a little bit lighter on the main armament in terms of caliber. Uh, they're four inch guns as the main armament, but we have a lot of them. We've got four, uh, actually we've got six four inch guns in the front, kind of in a broadside configuration. And then we have a further six in the rear, plus one lone middle gun here. So we've got seven four inch guns in the rear of the ship six four inch guns in the front of the ship and then we have two three inch casemate guns uh in the hull itself and it only has two funnels it theoretically can make 21 knots uh for its speed uh, but the problem is i don't have technology and i don't have large enough hulls on these ships yet to get more than two stacks in this cruiser so its engine efficiency is pretty poor which is going to give some pretty considerable acceleration and operational range penalties. I'm not quite sure what the torque at high RPMs is, unless that just means like if I'm trying to maneuver, but I'm really not sure. So we'll, we'll have to see how that plays out. But this is a 2,500 ton light cruiser. It's an all gun cruiser, uh, prim primarily going to be used to uh, menace enemy commerce, I would, I would assume. Um, I, I could make the thing go faster. I could make the bulkhead smaller or whatever. Uh, but there's not really a point in my opinion of making it faster than 21 knots when I can't even get its maximum efficiency because there's no way to put more than two stacks in this design. So that's going to be the, the design here that we're going to go ahead and save. Also, the ship is perfectly balanced. There is no fore offset or rear offset. The weight is perfectly distributed, which is one of the reasons I would ditch the torpedo tubes is I wanted a really level and, and sort of perfect gun platform. And this should be that based on the ideal weight distribution. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to build some of these things. So the butcher is going to cost just shy of $700,000 a month to build. That's about half the cost of the uh, side class that we designed last, uh, last episode for our heavy cruiser class. Um, and so we are going to build uh, eight of these things. So we're going to go ahead and build eight of these things. It's going to be just shy of $600,000 a month. Uh, we're going to lay those, those bad boys down here. So if we take a look here, we can see we are building eight light cruisers, and I'm going to set these guys to ports. Uh, we're going to go ahead and set four of them to Wilhelmshaven. I don't know if there's a penalty if you like over garrison a fort or not, but basically we're going to go ahead and set four of them, uh, not a fort, a port, uh, four of them to Wilhelmshaven, which is kind of, in my mind, the, the core of the fleet. And then we're also going to go ahead and set four of them to, let's say keel and i don't know actually we'll do two of them to keel and then we'll do two of them to emden i don't really know how the ports work other than obviously it assigns them to a particular sea which the north sea would be all of these ports um but uh yeah i don't really know how it plays into account other than presumably it influences where uh, you will end up fighting the enemy. Probably no one in the Baltic is going to end up fighting any battles. But it doesn't look like the game lets you move ships around yet either. So I don't I don't quite understand that. I did adjust my volume up a little bit, guys. So hopefully I'm a little bit louder in this video than in the previous videos. Sounds better to me, but you guys let me know in the comments. You can see here we are negative $100,000 in the budget right now with those 
eight light cruisers and and four heavy cruisers currently, or sorry, four armored cruisers currently under construction. I had someone comment in the in the last video saying, "Look, they're not armored. They're not heavy cruisers. They're armored cruisers." Which yes, but you guys ever notice how a heavy cruiser's abbreviation is CA, cruiser armored? Um, the armored cruiser is very much the grandfather of the eventual heavy cruiser. The armored cruiser evolves into the battle cruiser and then because of post-war treaties uh, devolves back down into essentially uh, what the modern heavy cruiser was, but also in many ways the precursor to it, the armored cruiser. Anyway, so we're building eight of these things. We're building four of these things. 12 ships building, two repairing, 33 ships active uh, currently in our game. Uh, we did lose that first battle here, so we are losing pretty convincingly on victory points, but uh, we'll see how maybe our change in approach might benefit us. Let's go ahead and end the turn, move into March, and see what happens here. The German Empire loses one transport ship in the sea region of the North Sea. How does it factor that? I don't know. Uh, and then there's a British Empire versus German Empire cruiser battle here, a light cruiser of the British Empire versus two light cruisers of the German Empire. Newfoundland, 2,300 tons, or two of the Gazelle class, uh, the Kohlberg and the Gear. Looks like we also have six transports with us, so we've got to go ahead and protect those convoys here. Our unescorted transports are under attack by raiders. Your ships must hurry and close and defend them. Okay. Let's battle. Fight! Okay. So the transports are turning away. The light cruisers are over here. My light cruisers, by the way, are slow as hell. That's also why I was designing that new class. Because these light cruisers only make like 18 knots. Okay. No sign of the enemy. I'm curious how good the AI is. In terms of... So you guys are turning... Where are you going? You should probably go... Can I not control these guys? Doesn't look like I can control the transports. Just the cruisers. So the enemy's spotted to the west. We'll go ahead and have Kohlberg and gear here. Now there's a gazelle class has six inch guns, two of them in each ship. Uh, and then it has, uh, or actually it looks like it has one six inch and one two inch gun. No, it has two six inchers. And then four two-inch guns. And that does have torpedo tubes as well. So our transports are turning away from the enemy smoke, and my light cruisers are coming up. It seems like they're making pretty good progress. Transports are turning away from the smoke, coming back toward me, helping us with our closing distance. Our, our cruiser's crew currently is a... Um, oh, shit. Our cruiser's crew is currently a cadet. You can see here the enemy cruiser appears to have, I don't know what kind of guns they have, but probably six inches based on the turret size. So these are probably going to be a very similar design to my own, heavy, my own light cruisers. All right, transports, why don't you guys like do the, do the thing? Run away. All right, my light cruisers st are still coming up. They're firing on this lead transport or lead cargo ship. Hopefully, they're also cadets and not, not accurate. You'd think all my ships would turn away, but apparently not. Um, yeah, you guys, I know you spotted this. Why don't you, like, evacuate... All right, so we are opening fire on the enemy. It's a Newfoundland class. Oh, they have seven-inch guns, so they do have a gun, uh, a weight of gun advantage on us. We have the advantage of numbers with two light cruisers to their one. Currently, we only have our lead turret in action. We're at 3.7 kilometers. You can see both of our ships are firing, but not terribly accurately. Time compression's down to times three. Like transports, run the fuck away. 
We also got to try and make sure we avoid any enemy torpedoes. I'm hoping I'm more maneuverable than my battleship here. All right, so he switched fire, so he's not shooting at me. So I'm going to turn away to get my broadside in action. I'll slow down to times two. Ooh, those are real close to hitting. So are ours, though. I don't know how many hits we can take. Oh, shit. Enemy torpedoes are in the water. Transport's taking evasive action. I think they're going to miss. Good. He wasted his torpedoes on my transport, and it looks like he's going to miss. All right. He is in a smoke screen. Do I have that as an option? I don't know if it affects my aiming. Oh, we got a nice hit there, so I'm going to go ahead and smoke screen it up. He's smoke screening it as well. Penetration, we destroyed a funnel. All right, let's go ahead and turn. Hopefully, if he is firing torpedoes, that throws him off. Oh, we just fired one of our own. Slow things down a bit. So we have a torpedo in the water. And... He's turning away, which is the prescribed tactic, but I think it's going to hit. Looks like right amidship. Boom! How is the flotation only at 94? Okay, it's dropping. I can't imagine a light cruiser can take too many torpedoes. All right, let's adjust course again. Slow down to make our, our gunnery a little more accurate. I got to think one torpedo into a 2,000 ton ship is going to sink it. It is a flame. Stem to stern. You can see its float is all the way down to 20%. One of our transports has taken some damage here. Down to 17%. Do we collide? Uh. Looks like they may have stabilized out at 17%. Damage control on these ships seems pretty surprisingly good. Maybe this guy will fire. Well, he's out of range of torpedoes. All right. 15%. He's still shooting some of his guns at the transports. All right. Looks like he stabilized his float damage. It's on the upward swing. Let's go ahead and be as aggressive as we can with our torpedoes. Floats at 21%. Just took a minor hit here with some flooding. Enemy torpedoes are away. Crank up the speed. Turn away. Can you avoid it? Well, it's not going to be a midships, that's for sure. Hard over! I think it's going to hit. You know, the funny thing is if I had... Oh, oh, running right parallel to the ship. We just barely missed it. It went right by us. Whew. That was a close run thing. How about you guys just fire a goddamn torpedo at the nearly dead in the water Newfoundland? It has no engines. I guess you're out of range, but still, like, somehow they recovered. And they're up to 30% float. 
speed things back up. Gunfire is just too ineffective and slow. So while they may be uh, inexperienced crews from a gunnery perspective, apparently their damage control is spot on. All right, can we turn in and get like a direct? We have a bow torpedo tube. Oh, we just fired a torpedo from that other rear cruiser. I didn't even see that. Just missed me. Friendly fire is a thing, so you got to be careful there. And I don't think that's going to hit. I think it's going to just miss. All right. We are scoring some hits. I did order aggressive torpedo firing, so... They fired on the bow, which is not a good angle of attack. Now, the thing is, because they've taken so much damage, it definitely seems to impact how much... how accurate their gunfire is. They don't seem to be doing a ton of damage to me. Great if they fired some of their amidship torpedoes. Although I don't know which one fired. We're going like broadside to broadside with this guy. If I had saved my torpedo, this would be a great time to shoot it. Oh shit. Well, I'm a toast. Uh, well, Kohlberg is going to take a serious amount of damage here. We'll see if it sinks. Any chance I can sink the enemy before it sinks me? Kohlberg, I don't know you're going to make it. I'll stop. All right, so we both have crippled cruisers. My flooding is out of control. He's at 25. I'm at 19. <sighs> Detach and get out of here. Sixteen. All right. I don't know that I even have any engines left, but I'm going to try and make a small amount of way to get away from this guy. I feel like I could manually train the guns on these guys and get hits. All right. Oh, more torpedoes? And we're going to lose that light cruiser. Why did he get to fire his two right away? Why didn't my, my ship only fired one and it made it look like our torpedoes were out of... Out of ammo. I'm kind of confused on that. What do you... Remake? Huh. Yeah, it's flooding. It's just taking a little bit of time. I hate torpedoes in this. I don't know how to fucking use them. That's why you don't go uh, broadside to broadside. Somehow my flotation is going up on the Goldberg. Which, okay, if you can get yourself out of there. The enemy should be out of torpedo ammo on that side of the ship. So I'm going to try and swing in here and use my... Torpedo tubes on the right side of the ship. Let's turn off our torpedoes for now until I can get a better angle. Whoops. OK. 
Okay. Torpedoes away. Looks like it's going to hit. There we go. Fire flooding. So how is he not... Did I just get hit by a torpedo? Or no, I launched another torpedo. Okay. How did he get hit by a torpedo and his float damage is still 30%? This game, when I played it the first time around, had some really funky mechanics where, like, if a compartment was destroyed or took damage, you couldn't do any further damage. So, like, if you hit an already flooding compartment there'd be no cascading damage, which would be weird to me, right? Like, even if you have a hole in your ship and you're flooding there, if you put another torpedo into that hole, it's going to rip a bigger hole until it's all the way through the ship, presumably, right? Anyway, the enemy's out of torpedo ammo. So we should be, I don't know why I know that he's out of torpedo ammo. That's a, seems like a fog of war issue, but it says he's out of torpedo ammo. So we can relax a little bit. And hopefully just pepper this guy. Like these ships are remarkably resilient. He's taken three torpedoes and the Newfoundland hasn't sunk. He's a 2,300 ton ship. I get that these aren't like 1940, you know, 1941, 1942 long lances, but still. The ships in this era and the pre-dreadnought era were notorious for going under with like a single torpedo hit. Especially the the bigger ships. They, they just didn't have the ability to take that kind of punishment. They didn't have adequate water watertight compartments. They were very cramped, so one hit would, like, just obliterate a huge amount of the capabilities of a ship. It's almost like you've got to go all the way around to both sides of the ship to batter into submission. It lets me end the battle, but I, I want to sink this guy. Another torpedo hit from, presumably from Kohlberg. All right, now he's done. It only took four torpedoes. Newfoundland sinks. We win the battle. Despite heavy damage to, to one of our light cruisers, Kohlberg takes a good amount of damage. Greer really doesn't take any. None of our transports are sunk. The enemy light cruiser is sunk. 366 victory points to 12. And it's a victory. Okay. So the enemy loses a light cruiser. They still have 21 of them. And there you go. Naval prestige goes from negative 2.3 to negative 0.7. I don't really understand what the province has controlled. I have anything like maybe that would matter more in a land war. I don't really think there's an amphibious option. What's this? Battle. Mission list. Battle. Okay. One German heavy cruiser and two light cruisers versus... Am I able to fight that? Oh, okay. Do I want to fight that? I don't have the option to withdraw. Okay, so let's try the auto-resolve feature. I've heard rumors that it's not very good, but let's try it. Okay. So the heavy cruiser Thor takes heavy damage. Berlin takes medium damage and Falky takes heavy damage. The British heavy cruiser King Alfred takes medium damage. The Castor medium and the Mercy heavy. So it's a draw. Both sides get about the same amount of victory points. All right. So unrest is still 2.3. I don't know why it's 2.3. I guess one minor defeat with that, tra that, <laughs> that torpedo boat battle was... Concerning to people. How's our monthly our monthly balance is now negative one million, which should get better once we complete the ships we're we're constructing. Um first off, it's probably reflecting the fact that we have a bunch of ships under repair. I'm guessing that costs money. 
Um, and then we're also building these ships down here. But they'll be done before I run out of money. They're all going to be done in eight months. So the slipways are, are working, are hard at work. I also don't really know how the game decides when you win. Maybe when this bar gets to one side, I'm not, I'm not really sure. The Thunder Class Battleship, a new plan of design for the British. They're designing a Thunder Class Battleship. Okay. And so, presumably, oh, we're going to be in the English Channel, huh? A light cruiser versus a British heavy. See, this is where I would want to withdraw. I guess we could try and close and, and maybe go for a torpedo attack on them, but it's going to take so many goddamn torpedoes to sink. We'll get, we'll get hit by the enemy guns beforehand. And my light cruisers are slow as fuck. But hey, spotted to the northwest. But hey, we can try. I don't know how fast as heavy cruisers are. I am increasing the training of my crews considerably, so that will help. You can see down here it says training level cadets, which means accuracy is reduced by 12%, aiming by 15%, reload time is 12% faster, and damage control is 27% slower. All right, close the range. Whoa. We're going to try and fight this battle on, on turbo speed. We only got one, one ship. Adjust your course. Come to the head of the enemy ship. We do have six-inch guns. It's not a destroyer based on the pre-battle report. It's not a battle cruiser because those don't exist yet. We got a ricochet. It is a heavy cruiser. Partial pen. We score the first hit. I don't know how fast this ship can go. 16 knots. So we do have a two knot advantage. All right. Aggressive torpedo... Torpedo action here. I hope they fire their torpedoes. Turn. All right, so their torpedo is going to miss me. My torpedo hits him. Nice. We have another torpedo out, but that's going to miss. I think my bridge got hit. Turn away. He fired torpedoes at us. Oh, no. It just barely missed us. Went right by our bow. Nice. All right. So I think our captain is dead or our bridge was destroyed. Yeah, we got him. Our torpedoes finished him off. I know that was like a lightning round battle, but that was sweet. I didn't even look at the details, but we sank an enemy heavy cruiser with torpedoes of the light cruiser. All you got to do, charge right at the enemy. Damn the torpedoes in full speed ahead and rely on your own torpedoes and get a victory. Hell yeah. That'll even things out a bit. Not to mention the British don't have any battleships, so heavy cruisers are their capital ships. Which is nuts, considering they're limited to 3,500 tons at this stage. There you go. Victory in the turn of March. It gives the Germans... Well, we are not quite ahead. We're a little bit behind on victory points. But it does bring our naval prestige up to 1.9. And unrest drops further. So the population really cares about those naval battles. Do we know that they have 14 heavy cruisers? Looks like they finished construction of the heavy cruiser Australia. Damn it. Right as we sink one? You're never going to win. Uh, also, why do the British get to have ships under construction at the start of the game that are like almost ready and we don't? 
Sneaky AI, sneaky. Right, some of our repairing ships must have completed because the monthly balance, the negative monthly balance went uh, improved a bit. Down to about 700,000. Repairing one heavy cruiser, four light cruisers right now. Building 12 ships, four heavies, eight lights. Research is still underway here. We are prioritizing engines. It's going to be 18 months till that research completes. Range finders are at 22%. Don't even know how long that's going to take. And armor quality is 20 months. Wouldn't mind researching cruiser design. That'll give us more cruiser hulls. So we could have maybe bigger cruiser displacements, which I think would be nice. It's at 58%. These other items are closer. Not the range finders, but... Okay. Um, yeah, so respected unrest. Naval prestige normal again. And so that's that's the campaign in a nutshell, guys. I know this is a little bit of a shorter video, but you can see we fought a couple of battles. Uh, we started closing in with the British in terms of victory points. Um, you know, we, we, we beat a heavy cruiser by just charging at them. Work in progress. Submarine survivability. Single hull with extra light. I'm not even researching that. Submarine hull receives some other mod module. Okay. The British Empire lost five transport ships in the sea region of the North Sea. Okay. That's good for our victory points, I assume, right? Meanwhile, two heavy cruisers of ours versus one light cruiser and two torpedo boats. I don't want anything to do with this battle. I do not want to fight enemy torpedo boats. My crews suck too much. I can't withdraw. Can we? What happens if we auto-resolve? Fuck, the Bavaria sunk. The Irene takes light damage. The British light cruiser medium. Heavy damage to torpedo, heavy damage to torpedo. God, they just... Are, our ship sucks so bad against torpedo boats and light cruisers. I imagine this battleship fight's going to be the same thing. But we can't not fight it, right? Heavy cruiser Good Hope and light cruiser Dauntless versus two German battleships and a light cruiser. All right, well, maybe we can we can even things up a bit. We're just definitely going to get crushed by torpedoes because this game loves those damn things. The Kaiser Wilhelm de Grossa. She has her tumble horn. Tumble horn? I, I, I know I butchered it last video. But we've got our 12-inch guns. Tumble home? I can't remember what you guys said in the comments. Someone had a pretty funny comment, though. Give you give give them credit where it's due. Uh, they said uh, tumble ho home, and then they said they crossed that out, and they said like trombone, or it was basically like sad tumble horn, a sad trombone reference. So we have incoming fire from something. I can't see it. I saw the shell splash. All right, they're five kilometers out. We'll open up with our big guns. Ooh, we got some nice plunging fire going there. You can see the arcs on the shells. Whee! All right, I don't want to get too close. We're going to fight this one on turbo also. By the way, is this whole fleet in a... Where did my light cruisers go? Oh, they're right over here. So they're a screen. So let's swing into line of battle to try and prevent closing too much further. Looks like we're at about five kilometers. They are turning away from us. This is a light cruiser. So actually we will, if they're going to turn away, I'm going to kind of keep going, but I'd like to get my rear turret in action. What's this other thing shooting at me? That's probably the heavy, but I can't even see it yet. All right, we have a 1% chance of a hit. I might actually be faster than them. I can go 18 knots. 
their light cruiser can make 17 and a half. So that's kind of a faulty design light cruiser, slower than a battleship. What are you going to do? Run away? Oh, wait, you can't. Got to stay out of torpedo range. All right, we're going to turn away from this guy. And we'll also bring our rear turret into action. He's definitely coming in to try and hit us with torpedoes. He's going to get in range, too, if he's not already. He's basically just on the extreme edge of torpedo range right now. So we're turning away as much as we can, which is going to make our gunfire less accurate. But if we can keep this angle, we can broadside him with our heavier guns. I guess we should probably go with HE. As uh, I'm assuming our 12 inches will overpen the hell out of this guy. So we are still keeping our range just outside of torpedo range. While we slowly start to light this guy up. He's closing a little bit. Let's angle away. This feels a little bit like the, the historical battle of the Falklands where the uh, British battle cruisers just kept themselves outside the effective range of the German East Asia cruiser squadron's guns so that they could just basically obliterate them with their heavy guns while the Germans couldn't really do anything. All right. Not getting many heavy hits here. Mostly two inchers. Kaiser ends at 100. I don't know if she's taking any hits. Nice screening light cruisers behind us. Should make sure that the Kaiser ends not in range. He's not. Boom! Nice 12 inch hit there. Started a nice fire. Inside range, got to turn away a little bit again. What I'm not clear on is when it says the torpedo range is nine tenths of a kilometer, does that mean if you're inside it, like it, like do the torpedoes actually run out of fuel at nine tenths? Because we're probably pretty safe moving away at this distance. More hits. The Kaiser is really pulverizing this guy he's taking some float damage though did he take a torpedo hit there's just six in six inches i didn't see a torpedo hit dauntless has seven inches so she could probably penetrate the armor on her pre more hits though the kaiser is doing doing its work Our two inches aren't going to do much against the Dauntless, but our 12 inches when they hit that thing are peppering them pretty good. Where's the heavy cruiser at that way? Watch these uh, case made guns do their thing. It's almost like a ship of the line with all those little. Holes in the side of the ship. I definitely do not want to lose a battleship here. That would be a very bad day. So that light cruiser might get away. Just because now I've got to turn and engage the Good Hope, who has eight inch guns. And I don't want to get inside its range because it also has torpedoes. Is 
So we're going to switch our fire. I don't know if it makes sense to switch to armor piercing. Oof, those were close. Those old style rounded turrets. Oh, I'm on fire. Got almost a 10% chance of a hit. How much ammo do we have left? Quite a bit. More than a kilometer out. Switch your fire. I don't know why. You should definitely be firing at the close target. I was thinking it'd be great to like hit a torpedo mount and then I kind of realized that's not really going to be a thing. Given the torpedoes are probably all below decks. All right, let's turn away. Rear ship is in torpedo range. Uh, pause. Detach. Hard over. Enemy torpedoes are inbound on the Kaiserin. Got a nice salvo hit there. I think they might hit, but what I'm not clear on is we're at seven tenths. I don't think we're going to gain a tenth of a kilometer. She's going to take a hit. She's not fast enough maneuvering. I tried to keep us at like max range. Kaiserin's at 100% float. The float damage must have been to one of the other ships. Oh, my God, that was a huge explosion. How much float damage are you going to take? I must have, like, accidentally looked at the float damage on the uh, enemy light cruiser when I thought I was looking at Kaiserin before. I assume if the heavy cruisers don't die after one hit, the... Uh, Battleships won't, but that may be a bad assumption if you've got like cramped quarters and not many bulkheads. We're at 50% float now. Looks like we're leveling out a bit there. Can we finish off this enemy heavy cruiser? Where's my light? Light cruiser, get in here. You can go torpedo that bastard. 25% chance of a hit. So score a goddamn hit with this next valley. Get one 12 incher in there. No. Good hope is at 74% structure. I mean, I think this is a defeat for us pretty clearly if we have a battleship that's crippled. We did badly damage his light, but. It's not gonna be like a decisive defeat or anything because it's just damage and no ship sunk yet. Gonna try and charge in with our light cruiser to go torpedo that guy. 2.1. That end battle screen's a little annoying to have it just like sit there. There we go. Nice little flooding hit there. I guess that was only probably one of our light guns. All right, go charge this fucker. 
Damage control is remarkably good on all of these ships. All right, torpedo tubes are where? Four and broadside. Closing to torpedo range. Target identified. Try and get the broadside one out there. Oh, shit. Miss me. Miss me. Nice. All right, he missed with his torpedo on me. I maneuvered just barely to miss him. Our torpedo hit him. Yeah. All right. That heavy cruiser is suffering serious damage. Another torpedo out, and it's sinking. Boom. <laughs> Putting a torpedo into a sinking ship. Whatever. Just sink some quicker. Wow, that thing's going down fast. Blah, 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 blah. Rip Good Hope. Fitting that the Good Hope also lost to the Asia Squadron, which is kind of how this battle went, except in reverse. All right, that's a victory. I won't pursue that light cruiser. So you can see here a victory for us. They do get 31 victory points. Uh, the Kaiserin did take a torpedo, but it looks like the Wilhelm der Grosser and the Kaiserin both are green, so they're not considered heavy damage. If we take a look, we can see the ship stats here. So the light cruiser suffered damage quite a bit across. Oh, that's kind of cool. You can see like the cross section of the ship and where the damage was. You can see damage dealt, damage received. So they dealt 809 and 129. Seven flooding received five, 15, nine, remaining crew 82%, 79%. Well, uh, the game just automatically assumes if your ship sinks, you lose everything. Uh, main gun accuracy, Kaiser and Kaiser Wilhelm de Grossa did okay, 7.5%. Secondary accuracy, theirs were better. Torpedo accuracy, 50% on the Good Hope, 100% on the Geyer. Ammunition remaining, XP gained. They lost XP? You lose experience if you lose a battle? That's interesting. All right, so we sank a heavy enemy cruiser, damaged a light cruiser. Came away victorious. 501 more victory points. Small encounter. So there you go. They're down from 14 heavy cruisers now to 13, so they didn't lay down or complete another one. The submarine technology doesn't really matter because I don't think that's in the game yet. I'm confused. Why are they getting more victory points than me? Like, they lost five merchant ships, it said, and we just sank one of their heavy cruisers. Are we, is it like saying we're blockaded? And that's why? I don't really understand how that works for non-battle XP. And it doesn't seem to give me a breakdown. I mean, our prestige is good for, you know, where we started. But what's with the XP for them? Why is it so high? I'm not declining battles. Unless the way the wording on the transport losses was confusing and we lost the five transports. I don't know. But yeah, so this is the demo, or not the demo. This is the beta patch, if you will, maybe more like an alpha for the campaign for Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. This is part two of our look at this campaign. Um, I'm enjoying myself. I think it's still pretty bare bones, but I think they're being upfront and honest to say, like, this is a very basic version of the campaign, and there's a lot more to come. Uh, there's more nations to come. The entire ocean, I believe, is to come. Uh, you're not always at war. So there's the whole managing your fleet and budget between wars and conflicts, which would make research and development and designing your fleet much more important. Um, I hope there's not a battle every month. Like, that seems a little bit silly. 
given the number of actual engagements in World War One, or even the Russo-Japanese War, which had a bit higher tempo of naval operations in the Pacific, and at least until the Russians were kind of dealt with at Port Arthur. Um, but yeah, um, overall, it, I'm enjoying it. I guess I'm curious whether you guys want to see a lot more of this right now or just kind of see, you know, this is what it is. So let me know in the in the comments below. Um, but that's going to do it for tonight. So I hope you guys had a good one. Uh, this is the Historical Gamer once again saying thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.